Deakin University now has the largest aggregation of avian biologists in Australia following the arrival of three world-leading researchers at the new Centre for Integrative Ecology. They are Professors Marcel Clayson, Bill Buttermer and John Endler. Professor Clayson has come to the Geelong campus at Warren Ponds from the Netherlands Institute of Technology. Professor Batama is from the University of Wollongong and Professor John Endler from the University of Exeter. And Professor Clayson brings with him a wonderful ally in his research, the sharp-tailed sandpiper. So uh, this uh, sharp-tailed sandpiper, it's a uh, wading species and you can see there's these long legs. So here we put rings on them for uh, individual uh, recognition. And, um, and long bills. So with these long bills, they probe into the, the mud or eat insects from, from leaves and, and find seeds between the vegetation. It's a long distance migrant, so it really flies a long distance. You can see that by its, its pointed wings. Yeah, you can see that here, the, the wings are long and pointed. So they're ideal for flying really long distances. Now this one uh, weighs, I think, something like 80 grams. And uh, so it is already starting to prepare for long distance migration. So their mates in nature, they are still in Australia, now in the central Australia, northern Australia. But soon they will leave for Siberia and then they make really long flights and then this one will probably double in weight. And because it has uh, in its brain this internal clock, also the annual clock, uh, I expect that this one will soon also start preparing, although it can't migrate, of course, because it's here in this aviary. But still, the endogenous program, as it is called, continues to, to run and uh, well, will then become very fat indeed. Our work is on how life reacts to change, and there's a lot happening in the world right now. So uh, we all know that we have an enormous impact on our globe and these sharp-tailed sandpipers are migratory birds and they migrate long distances. So during our summer here in Australia, they spend actually their northern hemisphere winter in Australia, non-breeding, and then when it turns winter here, they move to the northern hemisphere to enjoy a beautiful summer in the Simber Siberian Arctic and there they then breed. So they are living in a huge world and uh, in a world that is impacted greatly because during their migrations they also uh, visit the shores of, um, of Asia, Eastern Asia and uh, there's a lot happening so, and also here of course in Australia. So their world changes rapidly. So this is an ideal species to study how animals can cope with these changes. Now they are, well, they are in part climate change based, of course, but uh, besides climate change, there's a lot happening. I mean, the population of Australia is booming, we all live close to the shores, and it's the same in Asia. And these birds, like many other uh, bird species, they live on the shores, because just like us, a lot of life enjoys highly productive areas, and those productive areas are on, in coastal regions. So there's a lot of things happening in their, uh, in their world and uh, well, that's why they are s such a good species to study how animals can cope with these changes. I mean, when we uh, are going for a hike, we uh, make a, a sandwich uh, package, uh, but they don't have any pockets to put it in, so what they do is just store fat, so they become very fat, they may, this species we're discussing here, may triple in weight to make uh, their long flights because in some stage of their life they, they, they cross the Pacific and uh, that's a flight of at least 10,000 kilometers and for that they, they need a lot of energy reserve on the best um, energy storage that you can have in your body that is in, in, the, in the form of fat because that's most energy rich. A lot of this research uh, has been conducted through ringing. Yeah, so we are ringing birds now for approximately 120 years. That's when it started in, in Denmark. And nowadays we make use of uh, modern uh, technology. So besides bands, we also put uh, 
uh, radio transmitters on, GPS transmitters. But unfortunately, the animal we are studying here is uh, a little bit too small still for these devices. So we use uh, geolocators. And these geolocators, what they do is they measure light. So every two minutes, they store the amount of light. And they put it, uh, this measurement, uh, they store it away against uh, a time base. And from the day length you c and the date, you can see on what latitude it is. And from the, the, the time of midday, uh, you can uh, calculate on which longitude it is. So we, we use this tiny device, weighs a gram, and we put it on a, on a band on the, on the leg. Um, uh, stores this type of data for uh, a year, a little bit longer, and so we, we put it on and then a year later we try to catch the, the bird back and then read the data and then we know where it has been and when. Uh, they will be jet lagged, but it is also to, to their advantage really to be jet lagged. Because the things that I'm mainly interested in is um, how they economize their flights. Uh, so when do you go, where do you go? And not so much how do you get there, others than do you have enough fuel on board, is the sandwich package uh, big enough to make these flights, but more like how do I orient, how do I navigate? So that's another field of research uh, in which one of my colleagues is, is interested. The Center for Integrative Ecology, that is the, um, the offer that Deacon actually made to me. So, try to build a center. And uh, uh, I thought that was a, a fantastic challenge because uh, there are some really good researchers here at Deakin in the field of ecology. And, um, and Deacon has not only uh, hired me, but also uh, got other, some other good researchers to come uh, with me, or to come simultaneously with me here. And um, um, the, the idea behind the center is to, to, to focus on how life copes with changes. And I, like I explained already, that is a very paramount question to address. It's a very urgent question to be solved. And here at Deakin we have a, a whole array of people working at um, different levels of organization within ecology. And what I mean with that is that you have researchers that look at the ecosystem as a whole, they look at populations, they look at individuals, how they cope with it. And by gathering these people in one group, that's very important because you should realize that if we know how each individual animal reacts to a change, then by extrapolating that to the population level, we can also take, uh, generate more insight why populations change and why whole uh, communities change and ecosystems change. So here we have a, uh, an, a very interesting uh, collection of scientists that with joining their expertise can make really uh, a step forward in um, uh, advancing our knowledge on how life reacts to, to changes. Because it is a wonderful country and they made me an offer at Deakin that I could not refuse. And uh, maybe just like migratory birds, I, I like a change of scenery every now and then. And uh, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Okay, so uh, Bill Batema, um, he's uh, an ecophysiologist uh, and uh, um, on the, also he's uh, at the frontier of his knowledge. He just published a book together with some other uh, famous uh, ecophysiologists. And uh, what he, he's particularly interested in how individual animals um, with their, also their own um, uh, genetic setup so he looks at individual variation because uh, you and I, we are both humans, but very different too in how we cope with, with 